Is that broken? Hello, welcome, bonjour, or as they say here, ni hao, because I am in Tai Chung, Taiwan, a place which I think is fair to say is a powerhouse of the cycling industry. You want to get it made? Come here. Wheels, group sets, saddles, frames, everything. Now today I'm off to one of the major players, FSA Vision. And I'm pretty excited because they do everything in-house. Research and development, manufacturing, quality control. It's unique for a brand around here. Now, if it's half as good as this bubble tea, we're in for a good vid, folks. Let's hit it. Here we are, we've made it, people, to Vision FSA HQ, where the magic happens, where the goodies are made. The company started out life way back as TH Industries, and in 1992, they ventured into the cycling world with FSA. And then, come the early 2000s, they acquired Vision, where they ventured into the wheel industry. Before we head in, I've got one little thing that I have to tell you that I remembered last night when I was thinking about this company. Do you remember the 2003 Tour de France, Tyler Hamilton? where he ground his teeth down because after stage one, he crashed, broke his collarbone and well, finished the tour. A lot of that was down to FSA supplying him with the very first ever compact chain set that the professional peloton saw. So yeah, they've got a bit of history with innovation. Let's go and have a look. Life. Through a product has to start somewhere and it's here is it mark is yeah, this it is. the research it and is. development yeah so this is our r d office and so we're doing both industrial design here and we're doing mechanical engineering here so fea is going to be the finite element analysis and they're you basically using this to look at things like handlebars and and rims and wheels and hubs and stems and they're looking you know how strong is this going to be how stiff is this going to be where can we pull some material out where can we make it lighter how can we improve it overall the cfd which is the computational fluid dynamics that's basically the aero profiling and that's with that we do at our u.s office and we basically create a rim shape out of the cfd finalize that through hundreds of iterations bring it here and then the team here is looking at how are we going to make that rim how are we going to make it light how are we going to make it stiff how are we going to you know basically design it in the manufacturing process to yield the results that we want to get back out of it so you're designing testing everything on the computer rather than the real world before you before even we even make anything up. yeah okay we're all nerds but believe it or not i am no expert in how carbon wheels are made i have a rough idea but let's talk to the experts find out how they are produced first up though believe it or not They've got to check everything that comes through the door. All the batches are carbon, all the batches are resin to know that they're perfect before they even head over here somewhere to where they first lay up the fibres. Okay, Giorgio, I hear before it even gets played with in there, before they even lay up one wheel, it gets checked all the carbon, am I right? Yes, correct. Explain so, away. Here we are. We are in the Vision uh, Chemical Lab Test Area which is the first ever process of our carbon manufacturing. Um, we are here at the spectrometer, uh, which is able to analyze the chemical properties of our resin. The second process, differential scanning calorimeter, which is able to analyze the, proper, the chemical property of our resin from zero to up to the temperature, which is uh, reached during the curing process of our carbon fiber uh, manufacturing process. And then the third process, uh, it's basically able to scanning a single millimeter of the carbon fiber. In the end, we are able to check the quality of a single uh, millimeter of the carbon fiber batch. Right, we're going to leave Kate, Stu and Long to the science. Believe it or not, biologist, chemist and engineer doing that job. And you're going to take me through, this is an airlock, is it? Like on the, the space shuttles, on the space <laughs> stations? Correct. So on the left side, you would see our big refrigerator, which is the temperature goes from minus uh, 10 and minus 18 degrees in order to keep the carbon fiber property uh, as, as good as possible. Yeah. And then on the right hand side, you would see carbon fiber cutting machines, which are able to cut the exact quantity of carbon fiber that you need to produce rims, TT extensions, handlebar and cranks. 
We've done the science experiments. We've watched the hypnotic lasers cut the carbon. Next up, lay up. So this is where they start to take the shape, is it? Correct. So where things start looking like a wheel or like a handlebar or a stem. Correct. So everything is basically made here. Okay, is it all hands-on or is there a bit of automation? Are we going to see some machines, some robots? Yes, yes, we, we will. And as you can see behind us, uh, we have some of our colleagues that are basically doing this, especially on the small components such as stamps or TT and a bus or cockpit or even more, uh, the crunks uh, arms are basically handy in laying up. So basically it's a very, very meticulous process. Right, what we got here, these look, I'm guessing these aren't alloy rims. That's the inner part of the wheel set, basically, which is the, one of the first component of the wheel that has been laying up by a machine that is in front of us. The curing process is the heart of the carbon rim manufacturing process where the mold with the laid up carbon fiber and internal air bladder are heated and cured. The heat activates the resin and the internal bladder inflates, pressing the carbon layers tightly against the mold walls, ensuring proper compactation of the carbon layers and removes air bubbles. Right, this is no Thomas the Tank Engine train set. This is a conveyor belt. That comes from the curing process, the cooling process, and here we go, one of the molds coming through now. This is going to be cleaned up and be ready just over there to be laid up again. Okay, David, so we are stepping to the final process, which is called the final edge cutting area which is basically the last process within this building for a carbon components. Uh, the lady behind us is basically cutting off all the last material from the product itself, from the carbon product itself. So They're looking a bit more like the wheels that I was riding this morning. A little yeah. bit more uh, polished, shall we say. <laughs> I'm guessing you've got to be pretty careful here. You don't want to be damaging the rooms with what looks like very fine files. Yes, correct. So. Uh, you, you can imagine that part of the process could be hand, managed by Handley and part of it could be managed by machines. Oh really? So yes, but there are specific areas of the rim or carbon components that needs uh, to be made by hand. We're getting there people, we're nearly at a final wheel. Here is where the assembly all goes together, where you get the wheel building. Apparently it takes about an hour to build one of the new wheels which i'm gonna be honest with you seems a long time but apparently it's because they basically build it twice they pre-tension it make sure all the new carbon spokes are perfect that the wheel's perfect then detension it and send it over to the team who then rebuild it to get it within the right tolerances for it to go out the door I've been allowed to come off and roam alone. I'm now in the lab testing facility, a place where they put the equipment that they make through the rigors of, well, what it'd be like to go out on the bike. They don't just need to make sure that these wheels, these bars stem, stand up to the roads of Paris-Rou Bay, Flanders, or the mountains of the Alps and the Pyrenees, but well, to the ordinary folk who may use and abuse the equipment a little bit too much. The first thing that I'm going to check out is a machine that simulates a rider of 65 kilos riding at 500 watts at 40k an hour. So, basically me. It also runs for 250 kilometers and to make sure it's not just uh, pushing the wheels in a straight line, it tilts them from vertical to seven degrees that way and then seven degrees over the other side so it knows that it can take on the corners too. Right, let's see what else is here. Yeah, that's broken. Is that broken? See, the sound is different. Here we go, people, look at this one. We've got a damaged rim, but on purpose. Right, run us through what we've just seen because that was a pretty damn cool machine. Yes, it's called impact test machine. Right. So we basically test the 
strength of the rim and yeah. overall wheel system. Uh, so we are basically aim to test uh, to run the UCI regulation test, which is up to 40 joules. 40 joules. At 40, it didn't look it did anything. 40. 40 is. It didn't do anything. 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 The wheel is completely safe and as is basically coming out from the assembly line. Because we did three tests, 40, 60, 60, wasn't 60 it? Yeah. And then we went up to 100 and then up to 120, which was the point where the it failed. The failed. Yeah, so. It's amazing. But we've not got any broken spokes. This is the carbon spokes, haven't Yes. It? So this, this thing is telling you that the, the stiffness and the strength of the wheel system with these carbon spokes is quite heavy. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna, uh, I tell you, it's upsetting though, seeing a nice set of rims get broken. <laughs> it must, it, doesn't it hurt inside? I think, I think so, but uh, as long as these spokes could be easily uh, disassembled, so we can even replace the rim and we are ready to go. Rock and roll, yeah. awesome. Right. I'm going to go and have a few tears now. Can you hear that? That's not an ice cream truck coming. End of the day, it has been absolutely fabulous here. Checking out how the products get made, the people behind it. And I've got to say, it has been a delight. It's been an eye opener as well. I have never thought of FSA or Vision being, well, such a big company. They're definitely doing things right, that's for sure. And I tell you what, those new wheels look absolutely blinding. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let us know what your favorite bits are in the comments below. Also, let us know what other factories you'd love us to visit. Until then, thank you for watching and enjoy your riding.